Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my new series on astrophotography. If you want to learn how to take sharp stars, star trails, time lapses, or use your mobile devices like the DJI Osmo Pocket and your cell phone to take pictures of the stars, this is a series for you. Now let's drill the intro and get right into it. For those who don't know me yet, I'm Loic Belma Halford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. My first tip is to wear warm clothes because it can get quite cold during the night in the wild. So let's fix it right away. Now we're ready to go take the pictures. Before going outside to a perfect location, there's a few things you want to check on your cell phone. The first one is using your weather app. You want to make sure you have a clear sky, so no clouds at all, because even small clouds are going to block the stars. The second thing you want to check is how bright the moon is. And for this, I use an app called PhotoPills that allows me to see how bright the moon is, but also when it goes up and goes down. Because a full moon is great if you want to light up your foreground, but it's not great because you won't see the stars as much. So I'm searching for somewhere where the moon is either not there at all or not too bright for the night. The last thing you want to check, and it's by far the most important one, is the light pollution around your area. So if we look at my hometown Montreal here, we can see it's white and gray and red, and that's because there's too much light pollution to see the stars. So we're here in a yellow area, which is okay to see the stars, but if you really want to get the most detail, you need to go in a dark area that you can see in the map, but you can see it's actually pretty hard in North America to get places that are perfectly dark. If you're wondering what I'm doing in the middle of the lake right now, it's actually a really good question to ask. And I'm heading towards a rock in the middle of the lake because I want to have a nice open view of the sky. And this is what you're looking for when you're searching for a place to take a picture, is that you want to have a location where you can see the entire sky to get the most stars inside of your shot. So the sun is almost gone, but it's still not dark enough to take pictures of the stars. So we're still going to have a wait about, I would say, 20 to 40 minutes before the stars start coming out. But in the meantime, it's a really great occasion to scout the location and find what you're going to be putting in your shot. So you want to have as much as possible the stars because that's what you're taking picture of. But I still like sometimes having a foreground. So for me, uh, because I'm on a rock right now and there's only the lake around, a good thing as a foreground is using my kayak that's yellow and that's going to come back, come out pretty nicely in the shot as a foreground interest. Now let's talk about the gear I use. So right beside me here I have my 6D Mark II and the important thing to know about this camera is that it's a full frame sensor. And a full frame sensor is going to mean you're going to have more light inside of your shot. And if you have more light, you're going to be getting better results because you're going to be able to take pictures with a foreground in front of it, but also get the better details inside of the stars because you won't have as much noise. Um, but if you don't have this camera, I'm actually going to be doing another video on how to use your cell phone and the DJI Osmo Pocket that have tiny sensors. So it's still possible to get good shots with these type of cameras. The second important piece of gear I have is my lens. It's a 16-35 f2.8. And there's two things that are important about that lens. The first one is that it's a f2.8 lens. So that means, again, more light inside of the sensor and more light, better pictures of the stars. But the second thing is that it's a really wide lens. And you want a really light wide lens because you're going to be able to get more of the sky inside of the shot. It's also important if you want to have a foreground to have a wider lens because having a wider lens can allow you to get the foreground inside of the shot, but also a lot of stars. So you're gonna get the best of the both worlds uh, by having a very wide lens. But if you don't have a wide lens like that one, just do like me, I used to do before, and use my 24 millimeter lens F4 that was still good enough to take most of the pictures at night. So really don't sweat if you don't have this lens, don't go buy it just for taking pictures, start with whatever you have. And I'm almost forgetting the most important piece of gear actually, and that's the tripod. So we're taking pictures with long exposures. It's gonna be multiple seconds, about like 10 to 15 seconds. So if the camera moves just a slight bit during that time, the shot is not gonna be good. Now let's talk about the camera settings you should be using. And the first thing we're gonna set is your aperture and that's the lowest one you're gonna have on your camera. So in my case here, I have f2.8. So I'm just gonna go in my menu and make sure that I'm at the lowest right now, which is f2.8. If your camera's lowest is f4, go to f4. 
go to 3.5 if that's yours. Just go to the lowest you can because you want to get the maximum light inside of it. You might be wondering right now what we're going to do about focusing because if we're at f2.8, we're for sure going to be having things that are going to be blurry. But because we're taking pictures of the star that are really far away, we don't really mind. We can just set the focus to infinity and that's the next thing I'm actually going to do is just go on my camera, switch it to manual, make sure it's on infinity right now. And now that I know it's on infinity, I can actually take the shot and know that the stars are going to be sharp in the picture. If we have a foreground subject and we're going to talk about it a little bit more afterwards, I'm going to take another shot. Um, in that case, we're going to try and see if having the blurry subject in the foreground is a problem. If not, we might need to use uh, focus stacking, but I really do that in the end. Usually just focusing on infinity is good enough. So let's go take a shot. Um, I still have my shutter speed at 30 seconds. And for now, I'm going to leave it like that and see what happens when taking that shot. So let's take it. So it's taking the shot right now and there's something that's going to be wrong in that shot and can anybody guess what it is? Let me know in the comments below. So if we look into the details of the shot, you might not realize right away that something is wrong. But if we look into the details and zoom into the stars, we actually realize they create small little lines. And that's something that most people don't even realize. And it's that because the Earth is turning so fast all the time, when we are looking at the stars, they're actually moving in front of us. So with a 30 second timer, it's actually long enough to create small little lines out of the stars that are moving around. So a fix for that is going to be uh, reducing your shutter speed, but you might not know what shutter speed to use. And this is where the app I talked about earlier, Photos uh, Peel, is very useful because they actually have a mode where you can select your camera and select your lens, and they're going to tell you exactly what's your maximum shutter you can use to get sharp pictures. So let's go see on the app uh, what settings they're recommending us and switch the settings on the camera to correspond to that. So now we can see that they actually suggest two different values. So there's one for the NFR rule, which is 16 seconds. And there's another one with the 500 rule, which is 31 seconds. And we're going to use the NFR because the other one, the 500 rule, doesn't take into account the megapixels of the camera, which can actually uh, impact how it looks. So now we can see that with using the NFR rule, we're getting nice, crisp and sharp uh, stars. So I used a 13 second shutter, not a 16 one, because I didn't have that option inside of my menu. I could have used the intervalometer for that, but for now I just wanted to get the closest results I could inside of the camera. So now we have sharp stars and that's the result we wanted. So there's one last thing we need to check on the camera. So right now I'm using a crazy high ISO. So I'm at uh, 12,800, which is way too high. So I'm going to bring it down to 1,600. Depending on your camera, that's really the settings that's going to be in, depend on your camera. So I know for me around 1,600 is good enough. I'm going to get enough details inside of the shot, but not too much to get too much noise. So let's make that change and see what we get as the final result for this shot. Well, this is our final shot that we got uh, using these settings. So just to remind my final settings, I have a 13 um, second shutter. I have f2.8 aperture and I have the ISO at 2000. So let's go few, shoot a few other shots and talk about them. So I just placed my camera for my next shot. And then for this one, I actually want to get a few things in it. So I want a foreground with my kayak inside of it. I want after that to get the Milky Way in the shot. And I want to get the rest of the stars for sure. And I went with a vertical shot with, for this one because it's easier to get a foreground and get a lot of stars inside of a shot when you're in vertical mode. So this is what I'm doing. And if you're wondering how I got to know where is the Milky Way, I'm using the app I already talked about, which is Photo Peels. And if you don't uh, know yet, uh, this is a paid app, but I'm not sponsored at all for the, uh, using it. So I'm not making any money when I'm talking about it. It just it really helped me when I was taking my night shots. And let's go see in the app, uh, where's the Milky Way? We're going to go inside of Night AR. And this is going to give us an augmented reality view of our surroundings. So if we look at the top here, we're actually going to see uh, inside of the shot, we're going to see where the Milky Way is passing 
uh, by. So this is a great way of knowing if you want to get the Milky Way in your shot, where it's being situated and how you need to place your camera. Another way of seeing it is if I come down here and I go into planner mode. So this is a 2D view of where I am right now sitting. But if I go actually here and I move around the time, we're going to see these little dots here that are going to appear. And these little round dots actually show the Milky Way that is appearing during the night and where it should be in a 3D space. You might have realized that in this shot, the foreground, which is my kayak in this case, is actually quite blurry. And I personally don't mind at all that it's blurry because it's not my main point of interest. My main point of interest are the stars. And as long as the stars are really sharp and bright, that's the important part. The rest of the shot is actually going to be pretty blurry. So even if they're not that good, I don't really care uh, if they are blurry or not. If you really wanted to have them sharp, you could still use a technique like focus stacking, but I'm not going to talk about it inside of this shot. I hope you like the other shots. Uh, I did like a few of them. I didn't edit them yet, so I don't know how they're going to come out. But for now, they seem to be pretty nice. And now I'm taking a star trail and also a time lapse at the same time. So if you're curious to know how I do that, be sure to subscribe below because in the next two videos, I'm going to talk about these two techniques. So I'm super excited right now. I got some really good shots of the Milky Way and I decided to do a time lapse. It's almost 2 a.m. So I have another an hour, an hour and a half for the time lapse to complete. So it's not going to be a long night of sleep, but I think it's worth it. Uh, the Milky Way is just really nice right now. It went up, so now I have a nice view of it. So pretty exciting. I, it's actually the first time I see the Milky Way like this. So what a timing. I'm filming this video and it's the perfect timing to see it for the first time. I'm arriving home, it's 4 a.m. right now, but wow, the shots I got are just incredible. So by applying the techniques I learned you today, you can actually get the same shots I got tonight. You just need to be patient and be ready to pass the whole night outside to get these shots. See you tomorrow. Good morning. Yesterday I was super lucky with the conditions because I was able to capture the Milky Way and that's because the weather was perfect with no moon, also there were no clouds, and at 4 a.m. the Milky Way came up and it was almost vertical, which allowed me to get a better shot of it instead of having it only horizontally. Now let's go inside of Lightroom and edit a first shot to show you how I do it. Now let's look at the first picture here. If I use the exposure setting, I'm actually going to be able to bring back a lot of details here and we're actually going to see right away that the Milky Way appears. And this is a little trick to see what's inside of the image before I start editing it. A thing I forgot to say yesterday that's super, super important is that you need to use the raw uh, format when you're taking a picture because it's going to allow you to keep so much more detail, especially for a Milky Way because you cannot see it that much when you're taking the shot. So you really need to use editing techniques afterwards to bring it back out. So if we bring back the exposure it's to its normal setting, I'm actually going to just bring it up a little bit. I'm going to bring up the contrast, bring up the highlights a little bit, bring up the whites and maybe bring up down the blacks a little bit. I like using a S curve um, here, so in the curve setting and bring it up the blacks, bring it down here and a little bit more contrast by doing this. But if you don't really understand how uh, S curves work, don't care too much. It's not the most important thing that I'm doing right here. After that, I like having a little, a little bit more blue. So I'm going to bring back the temperature uh, to the blues a little bit just because I like having skies out like that. Some people prefer have it in it more dark or more yellow, so that's really a question of preference. I'm then gonna bring up the vibrance um, because I want to have all the colors inside of the sky come out. I'm not gonna touch the saturation here, but one thing I'm gonna do is if we look at the bottom uh, left corner right here, there's a lot of green that I don't really like. So here I'm gonna come and use a saturation on the color mixer, bring it down bring down the luminance and that's looking pretty good. Now the next thing we're going to do is bring out uh, the sky and this is the most important thing when you're taking pictures of stars is this step. So we're actually going to use a linear gradient here that we're going to place on the picture. 
we're gonna make sure it's on the mountain and has a nice feather in the sky here so it's covering all the sky and now this is a magic trick that's gonna make everything more alive and it's using the clarity tool so if we take it here and bring it up you're gonna see so much detail appear in the sky. So the stars are gonna be coming out and the Milky Way is starting to appear again. So this is super useful when you get wanna get more detail inside of the sky. Then I'm also gonna bring up the saturation just a tiny bit to get a little bit more detail, but I won't touch anything else on this linear gradient. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually because we have the Milky Way here and we want it to come out even more, I'm gonna use another mask. And for this one, it's gonna be a radial gradient. So I'm gonna bring it here place it on top here. I actually have a 100% feather because I want it to be sure that it's nice and progressive and I don't want it to be uh, too visible that we're applying your mask. So that's why I have it. And we're gonna come back here on uh, the Milky Way and add more clarity. Uh, so it's gonna bring it out even more. We're gonna see a lot of colors coming out here. Then we're gonna bring out the highlights a little bit more to make it pop even more. So this is starting to look pretty good. Um, and I might bring the whites a touch up. Yeah, that's looking pretty good now. So if we look at the original shot right now, uh, we don't see much in the sky. And if we toggle the control, now we see so much more, uh, so many stars in the Milky Way, quite uh, nice. Now we have one big problem in this shot. And that's when I was talking about light pollution. It's actually really important to think about that because in the bottom left here, we have what's called a light dome. And that's the light from my hometown, Montreal. That's about hundred kilometers from here, but it's still affecting uh, the shot. So if I use um, another gradient here, I'm actually gonna have a nice feathered one here that I'm gonna place on top more or less like this. I'm gonna come here and use the highlights and just bring down the highlights quite a lot because that part was quite distracting. Your eye would go on that instead of going uh, to see um, the Milky Way. So I'm just gonna move it around to place it more or less somewhere where I like it. And that's pretty good. Now the next step I wanna look at is the foreground. So we're gonna use another uh, mask for that. So here we're gonna come and place just on top of the foreground here. And this one instead of playing with the highlights, we're gonna bring up the shadows a little bit just to bring back some detail inside of the foreground. So this is almost my final edit. I actually did a lot more editing on my final version that I have right here. And if you want to learn more about that, let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to make a full video about how I edit my star photography shots with the Milky Way and more advanced techniques. Now let's look at a few other shots I took that night. The first one was the simplest one right here. So there's not much going on on this edit because it's simply uh, a nice sky here. But I do have a linear gradient on the sky to bring out the stars like I talked about because this is what makes the sky really pop out. And in this picture, I brought the saturation even more towards the blues um, right here uh, because I like having blue skies like I said previously. Let's move to my next shot here. And this is the one with the kayak and the Milky Way and the sky. And in this one, what's different is actually because I have a foreground here that I actually wanted to see. So here I have a linear mask on it and I bring back uh, the exposure of this. And I don't bring as much highlights in the sky because I don't want it to pop as much because I still want your eye to go and see the foreground. I hope this was a useful introduction to astrophotography and that you learned everything from choosing the right night, choosing your location, taking the shot and editing it. If you liked the video, please press the like button below because let me know that you liked it. And also subscribe below because I'm gonna be having more videos on this topic. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.